I just finished a new paper called Credit is Not a Right. Muhammad Yunus has argued that credit is so powerful in reducing poverty that it should be a kind of human right. The new paper says credit is not a right. Written with John Gershman, we argue that, on this one at least, Muhammad Yunus is wrong. We wrote the paper because a group of philosophers at the University of Birmingham asked us to give our view on Yunus's assertion. Should we take it seriously? There are four points that we make in the paper. The first one's a broad one. We've seen what we call a rightsification of development discourse. Everybody wants everything to be a right. The problem is that when everything becomes a right, then nothing's a right, that we risk diluting some of the important things that we started with. So we need to have a high bar for what's a right and what's not. We argue that credit may be worthy, but it doesn't cross that threshold. The second point is, let's look at the data. Eunice argues that credit should be a right because it's so powerful in reducing poverty. Here's our reading of the literature. Poverty matters a lot. Credit can help reduce it some of the time for some of the people, but the connection's complicated. Credit isn't a solution for everybody. In fact, some people get into debt and have a hard time getting out of it. It's a complicated enough equation that researchers are arguing about impacts all the time. And given the state of our knowledge, it's another argument for why credit at this point should not be a human right. The third point is when you make something a right, someone ought to guarantee that right. Now, this is a really interesting issue with regard to credit. Because Muhammad Yunus started by saying, you know, the government is not doing a great job at providing credit, at intervening in this sector. And in many ways, Yunus developed the Grameen Bank as a response to government failure. So now you talk about making credit a right, who's going to defend that? The government? Well, the government's part of the problem, at least according to Yunus. So what do you do? You look to non-state actors? Sure, but exactly what are they supposed to do to guarantee this right? The moment everybody's defending a right, nobody's defending the right. So the fourth point is there is something we should consider to be a right, and that's a right to non-discrimination. That's a right to be treated fairly no matter what your gender is, your ethnicity, your class, your background. You have a right to be treated seriously with respect professionally. That ought to be a right. You ought to have the right to non-discrimination and access to credit. So what this means is that banks and other financial providers have to welcome customers no matter where they're from, what they look like, and both implicitly and explicitly take down the barriers that are keeping 2.5 billion adults around the world from having access to formal sector finance. So the bottom line is that the rights language is based on some assumptions which are not well established and keeps us from having some important discussions. Where are the trade-offs? Where are the costs? What can we do better? It's too early for this kind of rights language. We have to do more hard work to really realize what Muhammad Yunus's ultimate vision really is about.